Hello! So this is take two. The first take was a little bit uh, meandering and a bit vague. It is, I, I won't lie, it's not been, hasn't been, hasn't been a great week. It hasn't been a bad week. Like there's nothing I can point at and say this is why the week was bad, but it feels like it's one of those periods where you're adjusting to a new normal and that's kind of taken the wind out of the sails a little bit. So yeah, so that's, you know, that's kind of been uh, a bit of a quality of this week. I think I've just been, just been kind of adjusting or moving through to finding my feet again in all of this. I've kind of been, I've been eating a lot for comfort um, over the last couple of weeks, probably the last three weeks. And that's really tapered off this week. So it feels like I'm kind of coming out of that coping mechanism um, and moving forward, which is a good thing, which is a good thing, but... Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's hard for everyone at the moment, but I don't have a lot to complain about. Safe, you know, safe, happy, healthy, families all, families are doing well, so compared to a lot of what's going on out there in the world, it's not that bad. What did I do this week? I was looking at cost-effective development for Alexa, and there's not a lot it turns out like when you boil it all down, there's not a lot really to talk through, but it's all good news. It's all good news. The requirements that you have for an Alexa skill are well inside, are well inside in most cases what um, Amazon provides is like their free tier of capacity because all of their infrastructure is very much geared around much more aggressive application requirements. And so I'll be looking at that. I'm putting together a post this afternoon that's kind of going to talk about three things. One is what are sort of what are the expected costs for a typical Alexa skill? Where is your money going to go? And then looking at okay, then what are your tools for analyzing? Why is this costing me? How can I optimize that? How can I optimize that? And then looking at okay, from there, if I need to scale, what are the potential tools that I've got available there? So not going too far down, not going too far down the scaling route because it's kind of a it's it's kind of a uh, different conversation, but certainly looking at it. Yeah, other good news as well. Amazon has opened up the Australian market for in-skill purchases now, so it's entirely possible to it's now entirely possible to make money directly off skills in the Australian marketplace, which is really exciting. Um, even if like going forward whatever, like I haven't even looked at sort of, I haven't looked at segmentation in, in markets and how you would push stuff out to different markets. I'll probably look at that next week as part of monetization. Um, it's a good continuation there. But even if you are targeting the US market, it feels like starting in the Australian market is a good point because it's a much smaller market. So it's easier to get everything, it's easier to get things tested to begin with before you release to a broader market. But in the back of my head, I'm now starting to think about, now I'm gonna be reaching out to an artist that I have worked with a number of times in the past because I'm now gonna to start to, now starting to think about, because I've got two weeks left after this week on this project. So now starting to think about putting, um, putting blood in the water about some of the experiences I'm looking at developing down the track myself. So starting to put together just light touch marketing assets around that sort of thing. So yeah, it's exciting times. You know, the uh, first idea that came to mind in terms of monetization for, because there's a few different space, like sci-fi space related skills that I'm thinking about um, working on down the track. You know, if you've got like a, if you've got a space mining game where you can move through sectors and you can, and you can mine resources, then you could pay a certain amount of money to pay a certain amount of money to have an actual company name in the audio assets in the game. Just finding, it's just a matter of finding a way to make that cost effective because you wouldn't want to pay too much for that as a player. So how much, how can you justify, like how much effort from a game design perspective is justified in doing that? Well, from a voice acting perspective to actually make that worthwhile. Yeah, but you know, these are the sorts of things that are now going to come down the track. So yeah. So there's a report going out this afternoon, or a post rather, I'll be putting together a post around what I've looked at this week, sort of what I've found around um, costing for AWS development. I, yeah, I'm gonna go into a bit of a tangent on that as well, and very briefly, very briefly, I'll talk about it here, but 
Um, I actually was digging through my billing for last month for AWS and my cloud, my CloudWatch, uh, let me start that again in English. My CloudWatch billing was quite high and I wasn't sure why. And I had to look back through and realize, oh, it's because of the Datadog application that I put in place to integrate and export log files, which is interesting because this is going, it will be part of what I'll be talking about there because I think exporting log files to an external tool is absolutely, is absolutely a valuable part of, a valuable part of being able to understand what's happening with your market. But I think there has to be a certain size before which it's just not worth doing in an automated fashion. It costs too much because it costs me like, and it's, it's chump change overall, but it costs me like five bucks five bucks to have that application running or thereabouts, just sitting there ticking away, spinning its wheels. I just left it there and you know, it wasn't doing anything. All it was doing was just looking for log files to, to push out to, to Datadog, which had been you know, disabled anyway. So there you go. So that's me for this week. I hope that you're well and you're safe. I hope that you are, I hope that, the, that you and your loved ones are are in a good space at the moment as much as is possible. I live in Victoria, so it's a little bit difficult. We're facing stage three lockdown restrictions again in a number of suburbs. Our numbers for infections are, are quite high again. So, you know, we're not as bad as some places that are out there, but it's still difficult to, it's difficult to keep positive in the face of what feels like going very much backwards um, as a state. So yeah, I hope that you're well and you're safe and I hope that the weekend gives you a chance for some rest and some joy. See you all soon.